Just so You're sorry, you will make up tomorrow Tell me everything you know, I wanna hear I'm trying to be open, but that window is closing And either way, I need to make it clear Before we're leaving here And shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lord, Sheep of Israel. And we have a couple of announcements, but it's really interesting that I'm looking inside the uh, chat. And I see a lot of people putting in this Shabbat. I don't know why you're doing that, because that actually is not a Hebrew word. It's actually speaking of something else. So I appreciate it if you don't put Shabbat in there. If you want to do that, you can do that in other places. But I'm asking you not to put Shabbat here because... Shabbat actually means something completely different on what you actually think it means. And it's actually not a used word for what they believe it is. It's actually a Sabbath and not Shabbat. So we ask you not to use it because Shabbat is not what you think it is. But the main thing is we're looking at 
today we're looking at the widow but i do have a couple of announcements that we do want to go through and based on some things that's been happening this past week and we want to make sure we get some things very clear here based on um one way to deal with a lot of craziness that people are um going crazy over the uh the decision that was made and things and that in nature and people's asking questions about it we'll deal with that most likely on the second part but then also we do have people who do things such as this and and the same thing is we try to mitigate a lot of this craziness <clears throat> based on what's going on so one of the things is is people this same gentleman here his uh call goes by the name of Cornelius the Israelite and the only way you can try to cut down on a lot of this is just start exposing it showing what it is <coughs> excuse me so what he did this past week he put in there and then you can see it he says I enjoy your lessons but have an issue with second address and the main part is, it's telling you, it says it was not included in the original Apocrypha. And after reading it, a lot of discrepancies. So I responded. I said, I did not know you were there when it was written. Why did not you tell? Why did not tell? Why you didn't tell King James this? That's number one. Number two, I said, I asked him to show me a discrepancy. But he couldn't show one. He refused to put one up. But this is where we go back to it. So what they try to do is woo you. I enjoy your teachings. I can care less about that. But when you sit there and you say something about the Bible itself, the King James Bible, which includes the Apocrypha, because it's part of it. But when you have people do things like this, they try to inject their own knowledge. And now he's saying he found a lot of discrepancies in the same people who do things like this. Is the same people who also wrote the Sefer Bible. He said he wrote, he's seen the King James Bible and he found a lot of errors. But when you ask people to show the errors, it's impossible for them to show you. The same as we had another gentleman. I'm going to leave his name nameless because he didn't do the second one. But he did the same thing. He, he said the King James Bible had a lot of errors in it. And he named some. He actually, he named them. And I actually showed him that's not the truth. And I showed him what the corrections was. Now, I don't know him as he don't know me. But the main thing is, I know he's seen the video because he never did a second part to it. And basically, I have no issues with him. He Technically, I guess he don't have no issues with me. And I move forward. But the main thing is, is when people do this, they act like they know what the Bible entails. And this, you need to watch out for people like this because what they start doing is start injecting their own ideologies, their own theologies on what they believe because they are unable to successfully show you what the truth is. So you need to watch out for that. And the same thing is, he, he's, he comes over here and I'm pretty sure he's seen it. He's seen that I'm doing this. But the thing is, you cut the, the, the this this demonic type of stuff off right where you can. Because don't play the game. Don't get into the game where people play. And the second one is the same one which we're going to look at. But then, actually, I do want to let you also know about later this afternoon at 3 o'clock that we will be coming out <clears throat> and we're going to be joined back here again. Uh, can we follow simple instructions? We're going to find out what that is all about. This is the second part from coming from Proverbs. And we need to really clearly understand what language and how we need to understand things. And a lot of us, act like we know things but we need to make sure we understand what this means so can we follow simple instructions let's find out if we can we're going to find out a lot of us cannot 
in this the, the last part that I do want to address is the same thing on what went on about the um this Roe versus Wade deal. And a lot of women got an uproar behind that. And I was also asked to chime in on my two cents, but the one I want to go on, which I didn't go on there, but I wanted to make sure I talked to that uh, Roland Martin because they had women on there talking all kinds of craziness on how men need to, now they got to see if they got to pull out in time, all this silliness. But just like I said, it's, even though this world is not set up biblically in God's way, but they say it's God's way and it's not. What you got to remember is this. And I've, and I've put that out a lot of times. One thing you need to do, they sit there and women will sit there and say rape and all this dangerous stuff. But you have places popped up everywhere to abort babies. And we know it's not that many rape cases going around in the United States. You having you sitting there having sex with a lot of men, and then when the man that you get pregnant with that you don't want the child by, you decide to abort it. That's what is going on. But main thing showing you where I'm gonna show you my stance as well as with God's, and this is why. I'm going to address this and then we're going to move forward with the teaching. But I want you to understand something clearly from here. And I'm going to take you somewhere to understand where I'm coming from. We're going to take this over to Deuteronomy, take you to the law and show you what is going on here. We're going to go to chapter 23. We're going to look at verse 17. And this is clear as day as we're going to get it. And actually, I need to put my highlighter on. And it tells you, it says, There shall be no whore of the daughter of Israel, nor a sodomite of the son of Israel. It's clear as day. Clear as day. Because it's not going to be a whore in there. And it's telling you also why we have a problem. And I'm going to show you, you, I'm leading you somewhere, but I want to show you law. And there's a lot more of this, but I just want to show you some law on what's going on. In Leviticus chapter 21, verse 7, it tells you, again, very clearly, Thou shalt not take a wife that is a whore. A whore is somebody who having different men run in and out of you. And the same thing with men who done went in and out of a lot of women. That's a whore. So just to let you know what a whore is, that's what a whore is. And it says, they shouldn't have, y'all should not take a wife that is a whore or profane. Neither shall I take a woman, put her away, her husband, for he is holy unto his God. And I'm a, I want to show you something to make sure. And, and most people, when I put that, when I put the post up on one place and they said in a lot of other places, people, they can't refute it. But I want you to remember where I'm coming from, because what he says, I believe what he says, I hold to. And he telling you right up front, right here in Revelation chapter 22, starting at verse 14, it says, blessed are they. That do his commandments. Wisdom is given to them that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. That's clear. It's not complex, not hard. But I want you to pay attention to this lad to verse 15. And I'm highlighting just the one. It says, For all for without are dogs. So the same thing is when you sit there and people have a problem. And they calling you a dog. And I tell you what, if you looked at the BET Awards, you'll see it. You got these women. They, they, they. <laughs> this is unreal. Unreal. And then the first thing they have a problem with, men calling them dogs. They had a problem with that. And then it says, it says, for all without a dog, sorcerers, and whoremongers. You can't get enough. 
Look at the BET Awards. You'll see it. It says the murders and idolaters and whosoever loveth maketh a lie. And now the problem they have is they want to sit there and try to say that's me. That ain't me. It says I, Yahweh Shai. I, Jesus, if that's the one you want to use. I, Jesus, sent my messengers, my angels, to testify unto you these things in the gatherings, in the synagogues, in the churches. He ain't going to have no whoremongers around him. So if you have a problem, you need to take it to him. If you want to be a whoremonger and you think you're going into the kingdom, this is where your problem is. So all these women sitting there talking about you have a right to your own body. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the problem. Why I say you think you help thins us out. So, so, so you doing us a favor and it telling you right up front. And when you look in first Corinthians chapter three, verse 16, it says, know you not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you, but it ain't dwell. It don't dwell in a whore period. It don't dwell in a whore because it goes on more. And if any man, M-A-N, man or woman, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So if you want to sit there and say that's your body and you can go screw around with all you want to, have at it. But remember what you are. You're a whore. And don't try to sit there and change it. You're a dog. Don't try to change it. This is for anyone who's sitting there saying and holding to, they talking about uh, that got turned over and then they got an issue with it. What you got an issue with? You just want to be able to screw who you want to screw. You want to screw as many as we want to screw. And then if, 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 if women and men kept their legs closed until they got married, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> but they don't. So that's why they had a problem. That's why they had a problem. That's why we go through these things. And this is why we have a biggest problem. And even when we want to look at it, and it's given into the teaching today, and I want to make sure each and every person, each and every person have some paper, have a pencil. Make sure you take these notes today because I want you to check. Now, once, once you get this teaching, grade me. Because this is just borderline craziness on what's going on. And, and borderline craziness as we continually move forward is borderline craziness on the past teachings as I'm coming up. And these things, we shouldn't have the problem with what we're going on with today. What do, what, what do it mean to be a widow? What do it mean? To be a widow is the question, or what is a widow is the question. And we want to understand, why does was God even care for them? Why do God care for a widow? So these are things that you need to meditate on. But to say for a woman who has experienced a loss, and what most people will say, this is a widow who experienced a loss of her husband. And even though a man can be a widow, but they are going to always tie to a woman who experienced the loss of a husband and they will refer to them as a widow. It's completely independent because that's how they're going to end up becoming completely independent on themselves to care for and to control the house. I want you to Pay real close attention to what I'm saying. So they control the house. So the widow must learn to take care of oneself in this world since they are likely to be abused and misused by other people. Because they have now no one else to assist them. Widows. See, widows are responsible for making all the decisions about maintaining their home. Please understand what I'm saying. If you can't flip this, then we got a problem. They are responsible for making the decisions in their home. 
In fact, uh, I want you to think about something. In the United States, did you know the average age of a widow often does not begin to they to they reach in their forties? And we're gonna find out a lot of weird things on that. And they and they're solely responsible for the upkeep of everything, and there is nothing else available to assist them in the endeavors that they seek. But it's a great number of responsibility that falls on the shoulders of a widow that are not shared by other people. Weird. Many people always uh find an interest in methods especially widows that define these different things and methods and, and ways to where they can live independent life, an independent life. So some will seek counsel. Some, some widows will seek counsel from many individuals. And many times when they go going to seek counsel, they get in counsel not from a friend, but from a foe, and don't know it. They say, well, this has been my friend for this long. It's really a foe. You just didn't know it was a foe. And when we look at it spiritually through the eyes, and this is understanding eyes, we want to know exactly what this is meant saying here. So when you're looking at the eyes of this, the understanding, and we need to understand this, the spirit of God, Jehovah, and we need to understand why he's really telling us and tell us about widows and how people sometimes on purpose make themselves widows. I want you to follow what I'm saying. Some people purposely make themselves widows. But we got to look at it spiritually. I want you to walk with me. I want you to walk with me. We're going to look at some things. We're going to look at some things. We're going to learn a lot of things today and find out a lot of stuff. And as I said here, and we're going to look at Romans chapter 7, picking it up at verse 1. Romans 7, verse 1. I want you to make sure we get what's getting ready to happen because we get ready to find out a lot of stuff. A lot of lot of information getting ready to come at you to help you and el- educate you on what's getting ready to happen. So I want you to make sure you have your spiritual cap on. A lot of you guys, a lot of new people over here, but I want you to put on your spiritual caps because over here we 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 do Bible here, we do Bible here, and I want you to understand what this said. And then the same thing, Deacon Q did a beautiful job on how he took out everything that's in the parentheses that you see in the brackets, and he shows you exactly, exactly what to do. But it's telling you, and I'm going to read it that way, then I'm going to show you the other way. But it says, Know ye not, brother, how that the law have dominion over man as long as he liveth. Now, you see how, how that happened? The reason why, because Paul wanted you to see the thought pattern on what was going on within the parentheses, where it said, For I speak to them that know the law. That's why Paul put that in the parentheses. That's why Deacon Q even said you could take it out because that's the thought pattern. But we see here that the law have dominion over a man as long as he live. I want you to keep that in mind because this is according to the law and according to the law of flesh and the other one is a covenant. Do we know that? And when people sit there and say it's two laws in the Bible, I teach that and everybody get it. But we got to remember when you want to look at it real direct. That's why I say I'm going to have to talk real strongly here and today because your life is on the line. And we want to know and, and clearly understand what everything is. When people sit there and, and same thing I teach, we got a lot of the elders here teach the same thing to help pull you closer just to understand what's happening. But when they sit there and say there's two laws, yes, yeah, two laws. But we want to understand what that actually means because one is a law. The other one is a covenant. So it's a difference. They just don't say it. I don't say it. But I'm saying it today. And we have to use those type of methods to pull you closer in to understand where God is coming from. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to prove that to you to show you that one is according to the law of flesh. The other one is a covenant with God. That's a promise that you promising to do something. So we got to look at those in in Romans chapter eight and picking it up at verse five. And actually, I got to turn all these on because I don't have none of them on. I already know that. 
And we're going to look at verse five. See what it says. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but however, they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. <laughs> this, this, we, we find an awesome thing. So if you are of the flesh, you're going to follow the laws according to flesh. You're going to follow those laws according to the flesh, including the laws was not created. Actually, let's, let's look at this. Let's put it all together. And then we're going to, we're going to dig a little bit more into it. And actually I can pull all this right down here. I can take all that together. Actually, I need to put that together. Just, just bear with me one second. I apologize. Yeah, there we go though. But it says knowing this, that the law was not made for a righteous man. It's not made for a righteous man. Period. And so if you of the flesh, you're going to do the things that is of the flesh. Cause that's the law. And the law was not made for righteous man, but the, for the lawless, for the disobedient, for the ungodly, for the, for the, for the sinners, for the un, for the unholy, for the profane, for the murders, the fathers, murders, the mothers, men, slayers, whoremongers, whoremongers in them that defile themselves with mankind, men, stealers, liars, perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So we need to be educated on this because the spirit of God is educating us on the acts of flesh, which you'll see in Exodus chapter 20. And we'll see it in verse three. And he's telling you right up here. Actually, let me do the one more that we should be done because we have them all done from that point. And um, tell it, thou shalt not have any, have thou shalt not have another gods, no, have no other gods before me. Full stop. Don't have no other gods before me, period. Full stop on this. These are the rules. These are the rules we got to understand. But those are the rules when people tell you and people teach and they go over to Exodus and they take you, this is the law. And that's not the law. That's the law according to flesh. And it's telling you what not to do because you're supposed to be living according to the spirit and you're going to do the things that's of the spirit. These things that rule the flesh that you see in first Timothy, they rule the flesh. See, men have quickly, and many of us have quickly have turned aside and did many other things. And as we continually look at this, and we want to understand what's happening, we want to understand exactly what is going on with us. And you'll see this here, when you get tied up with flesh, when you get tied up with flesh, you'll see even what the Spirit of God said unto Moses, and he told it, he says, go get thee down for thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They doing the works of the flesh. He said, clear, have no other God before me. And they have quickly corrupted themselves. Let's look at it. Verse eight. Verse eight, they have turned aside quickly out of the way. Turned aside, this is how quickly we do these things. This is how quickly we, we, we get off track. We have quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed unto it. They made covenants with it. How you gonna make, <laughs> let me move on, let me move. They made, they made a covenant. I need to pass that up. These be thy guys, O Israel. We don't, you made something and then once we made it, we gonna sit there and say, this guy took, how did we, how did that take us out of there and we, we, and we just made it? We made it then. We, oh yeah, this be the guy. This one took me out. Boo boo. Boo boo. Verse 
boo-boo. And it's like these be the guys over here which brought up, up out of the land of, of Egypt. Are you serious? And it takes you the same way back here to 8 5 in Romans. It tells you, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and but they of uh, that are after the spirit, things after the spirit. And we have many people doing this, and it's crazy. And what's going on? We're gonna follow and we're gonna do according to the laws of the flesh. We're going to do these things according to the laws of the flesh. And some of the things which are the laws of the flesh, and you know this is a law of the flesh, but he's telling you don't do it, but it's the law of flesh. Pay attention to what that is. That's the law. This is what you're supposed to be doing according to the flesh. Anybody hear me? I hope you hear me. If it's the law of flesh, then you have to do the things according to the flesh. Anybody hear me? <laughs> I hope somebody hear me on that one. Cause I, I want, I'm gonna tear it down, but I want to make sure that you hear exactly what I'm saying. Because we have some people go on, and we need to understand what is happening. We need to, cause I'm gonna tell you, if you is living after the flesh, what it is saying, what it's saying is, then this is what it's doing. Then we have to be an adulterer. Cause you living after the flesh, you have to be a fornicator, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, ill emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, and, and these envies and murders and drunkenness and rivalings. All these things you have to do because you living according to the flesh. Are y'all hearing me? These are things of the flesh craziness you're going to do those things because now you're doing the things of the flesh this is what goes on here this is why we ought to make sure we need to do this this is why it's so important why we need to make sure everything that goes on we have to make sure we following what the law is according to which it is. And if we under the covenant, then you follow the covenant period. Because if you're going to sit there and you're going to do the things after the spirit, cause you're going to live after the spirit it's based on the promise. It's based on a promise. And this promise is telling you what it is. And, and the main thing, I, I want to take you a couple of places here and just make sure it's all based on a promise and why Christ came. Because it's based on a promise here. And we want to see it. We want to understand and find out exactly what he's talking about. And it's telling you, and that's why you see over here, we'll tell you, you're a prospect because all of us, each and every one of us are prospects. And it says who are Israelite who pertain to the adoption and the glory and the, and the covenants. Don't say the law, say the covenants. And it says the giving of the law, the telling you what not to do in the service of God, in the promises. Promises is not based on the law. Seeking love, is that a law? Seeking joy, is that a law? Peace, is that a law? Long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance, that's a promise. It's not a law. No such law is, uh, it's the, you got to have a law of joy. The law of joy. Well, I got well, I got to have joy because it's a law. Show me the law. There's no such law as joy. No such law as peace. No such law as long suffering. These things are not there. The Ark of the Covenant is a promise based on a pledge. It's based on an agreement, not a law. Flesh seeks law. 
covenant seeks promises. Both, you got to understand the difference between the two. You got to understand clear differences between the two. Both, you see where you have people, they'll sit there and they'll tell you these things. And when you sit there, one going to rule the other. And when you sit there and you speak of the flesh and you speak of the spirit, and the spirit going to do things of the spirit and flesh going to do things of the flesh. And then one going to rule over one other. So both as long as you live, as it's telling you right here in Romans chapter seven, verse one, as long as you live, the law going to have dominion over man, M A N man or woman flesh. Flesh, 100% flesh. And either it's going to be ruled by Satan or it's going to be ruled by the spirit of God. I want you to clearly get this because we, we got to look at this real close and know, know the difference between. Why you think Yahweh shy? He told Pilate. He told Pilate this. He said, Pilate, his kingdom is not from this world. He's living according to the flesh. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, my kingdom not from here, Pilate. It's not from here. This world is the things of the flesh and not of the spirit. That's why it's given into the hands of the wicked. We should see why Satan is the ruler and husband. I want you to write it down what husband actually is. It means house ban. It's the one that keeps the house. It bans the house. He's the head. He, he bans the house. So now we know other flesh, Jehovah is the ruler also, but he can be the husband, the same thing. Actually, let me, let me take you somewhere. Let me take you somewhere to make sure we clearly get this. I want to make sure we, we all understanding this together. We don't put no little things where I'm just telling you to make you go look for these certain things. I'm going to make sure you see it. I'm going to make sure you see it. We're going to look at Psalms 89, but we're going to pick it up at verse eight. And we're going to see this is why he said this this way. And we're going to clear it. It says the old spirit of God of hosts. The house ban, meaning host talking about armies, but he's talking about, he's a, the God of hosts who is a strong spirit of God. Like unto thee or thy faithfulness round about thee. People say, I don't, I don't quite get this. I don't quite get this. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we gonna make sure you get it. We're gonna make sure you clearly get what's going on. But we have to find out what is happening here as we go through here. In in Mark, we will pick it up at twenty seven, and we're gonna look at verse. I mean twelve, but we're gonna look at verse twenty seven. This is why this is there. It says he is not the God of the dead. He's not the God of flesh. Dead. He's not the God, but people, oh no, he's my, he's not the God of dead. Flesh is going to die and it's going to stay here. It's going to return from where it came. But the God of the living, ye therefore do greatly err. And we greatly err because we sitting there thinking that he's the God of flesh. It's craziness. He's telling us constantly, Yahweh Shai or Jesus, whatever one you want to use, he's telling you right up front who he is. And we sitting there saying, no, he's my guy and I'm in the flesh. Look at me. You got people dancing, booty shaking all over the place, thinking that's their God. He ain't the God of the dead. He ain't the God of flesh. Fle <laughs> Boy, 
Let's look at a little bit more. Let's go, let's go a little bit more. And we're going to look at verse three. In, in Exodus chapter, chapter six, verse three, it says, I appeared unto Abraham. I appeared unto Isaac. I appeared unto Jacob by the name, by the way of God almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. He told Abraham, Hey bro, you got to come up out of there. I'm going to guide you somewhere. I'm going to take you to meet for a people and I'm going to be to you a God. He tells you right down here. And this, this is how, this is how we all came who we are. It says, including, I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God. I'm going to be to you a guide. In they following, not according to things of the flesh. They following things according to the spirit. It's a difference. People, well, well, I do this. No, 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 no. He's sitting there telling you right up front. I appear to them this way. They had to follow the spirit. In fact, you see even more. I show you more. We, we we see the problem we have is we don't want to believe stuff that we see. And you'll see even in in Genesis chapter forty nine verse two, one and two. It is telling it says, "And Jacob, according to the flesh, called unto his sons." Flesh. Jacob called his sons. According to the flesh, he said, gather yourselves together that you may hear that which shall befall you in the last days. But he said this, he said, gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob, all y'all fleshly boy. He says, including hearken unto Israel, your father, because I got to tell you some things according to the spirit. That's who you're going to follow. Don't you follow that flesh? And he started telling them what they were doing. One was successful. He want them to see the promises, the peace, the joy, the love, the goodness. And Jacob made this promise. He made a promise to Jehovah. And you want to see everything that we have to go through to understand what's happening and why we got to find out who in the world is this dang widow. Genesis 28. We're going to drop down a little bit and we're going to see in verse 20. Jacob made a promise. He says, and Jacob vowed a vow saying, providing God be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. I want to come again back there in, in peace. In peace. Then shall the spirit of a God be my God. Cause I already said this clear as day from the beginning and we just seen part of it, but I want to show you again why he's saying it that way. When we look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse seven, it says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. That's doing the things of the flesh because it's not going to inherit the kingdom of God period. But it says, in the spirit shall return unto God. It don't say nothing about the flesh going to return to God. It's in the spirit going to return to God. And if it ain't right, you got a problem. Because he going to toss that too. Actually, I'm going to tell you what. Besides me telling it, it's easy for me to show it to you. It's easier to show it to you to where you can believe it or not. Now you can believe it or not. We're going to go over here to Matthew chapter 13, but we want to pick it up somewhere. We're going to go down here to verse 46, 47, I believe 47 to where we can clearly get what is happening. 
and we right here on it. We right on it now. We right on it now because we can't get away from it. We're going to make sure we can't get away from none of this. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. I want you to pay attention to this. It's like unto a net that was cast into the sea. Guess where the sea is? You in it. You in the sea right now. And it says, and gathered of every kind. We in the sea right now. He talking these parables and people sitting there, saying, well, you're going out to the sea. We're going to go out there and catch us some, um, some halibut. And no. no. He's telling you what's going on, but he talks in parables. Goes on a little bit more. It says, which, when it was full, they drew it to shore. You see, it wasn't in no ship, though, don't you? You see, it wasn't in no ship. I told you, don't you get in that ship, but a lot of them don't get in the ship. They drew it to shore and sat down and sat down and gathered the good vessels. Yeah, oh, this is a good one. Yeah, let me put that one on. Yeah, put that, no, put that one on the right side over there. Put that over there. Yeah, Joshua, no, Josh, no. But cast that one on the bad, cast the bad away. I don't, I don't need them. I don't need them. See, this is how this is going to be going. And we got to understand how this is actually going to fully be played out. And you'll see as it gets down right here in verse 49, he's going to start making some clarity. It says, so shall it be at the end of the world. When the messengers, angel, these messengers, see, this is another part I don't normally get into, but just like I said, most people don't like, if you really go into your Howard Shy stuff, it ain't cool because he, he's talking really blunt. Because you're going to see what he's going to say here. It says, and the messengers shall come forth. I'll let that sink in for a second. I'm gonna get me a drink of water. I want you, I want that to sink in. I want you that to sink in for us. One hot second. Cause I want you to think about that. I want you to think. It said the messengers should come forth, including serve the wicked from among the just. They gonna separate them for him. Let that sink in a minute. I want that to sink in for me because most people don't know how this is actually going down. Why do you think when I sit there and say, when he opened up those books, somebody's there. The messengers shall come forth and shall serve the wicked. They're going to separate them from among the just, but he got more. He got more. That's why I say you better, you better make sure I ain't there. Cause it's saying it shall cast them into the furnace of fire and it shall be welling and, and, and gashing the teeth. And I'm going to tell you what that is. See the gashing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that ain't a beautiful thing, but gashing is telling you about the anger and raging. It's talking about, and it's going to be the anger and raging the teeth. And it's talking about his learning and his power. He going to find out, I didn't think that was him. I didn't know that was that guy. <laughs> That's why I say it ain't good to go go on a lot of your Howard Shy stuff. Cause people ain't gonna like what he say. Cause he's very he's very upfront. Cause when they start raging and angering, what you raging and angering for? Y'all said that messenger was a liar. You said the messenger w wasn't it. You said that messenger was this other person. You said that messenger had was no good. Now you're raging and angry because he done showed up and he going to be the one casting. Yeah, get rid of that one. Yo, hey, come on. But they got another one. In your power, that's why I say in your teeth, in his power, I'm going to show you who his power is. The one who getting cast out. 
We need to see who his power was. And you'll find that over in Isaiah chapter 9, picking it up at verse 15. It's right there in this clear as day. It said, the ancient and honorable is the head. Including the prophet that teaches lies, he's the tail. That's where their power came from. That's where their power came from. So this is why it has so much more as a problem as what's going to go on. But it gets better. It gets better than that. And we're going to see it. And I'm going to take you over here a little bit. We're going to look at a couple of other things here. Because we still, because the woman, we just making sure we can't get around nothing. And we'll find some of what we can't get around in the main place in Numbers chapter 27. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. Verse 16. Let the spirit of God, the God of spirits. He ain't the God of flesh. He's the God of spirits. And of all flesh, because it's sitting in there, and set a man over the congregation. <clears throat> Excuse me. People got a problem here. People have a main problem here. Because we're going to find out a couple of things that people are not going to like. But as I always say, yeah, I'm the worst person to ask. Ask me, do I care? I'm the worst person to ask that. Because I'm going to tell you, it, it don't bother me. Because the main thing is this. It's telling you right there, it says the spirit of God of hosts. That's why he's the God, the, the God of spirits, the host, the army of those. It's telling you all together who he is. And you got to remember the position on what's going on. So we got to fully understand the side of a woman. Because a woman is a spirit. And we got to remember who is the husband. And we want God to be the husband. We want Jehovah to be the husband, the house band. And then he's the God of hosts of these armies. And we depends on him. And he's the one we want to control the house. We need him to control the house. In fact, I want to pay. I want you to put something in your pocket as we continually move forward. We're going to find that over in Mark chapter three, verse 27. I want you to keep this and put this right in your pocket because every now and then you might need to pull this out to where you can keep your mind in check. It says no man, M-A-N, can enter into a strong man's house, including spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. We need to understand what that meant. We got to understand what that means. Cause we, what we trying to do is figure out how we could become in these widows. We building up to that. Cause I'm gonna make sure we can't get out of it. That's what I like to make sure of. We can't get out of nothing. So it's very clear to us today about our flesh. Flesh, you got to remember one thing and write it down with your pencil. Actually, I want you to write it down when you finish writing it down. I want you to put yes in there when you finish writing this down. Flesh cannot control flesh. When you finish writing that down, just say, yeah, I'm done. Because flesh cannot control flesh. Period. I want you to keep that in mind. Write it down when you finish. I don't care where you put it on your notes, but you had that in flesh cannot control flesh, period. It can't do it. It's impossible. It needs something to do it with. Something got to control it. And you, I mean, <laughs> let's look at something. I want, I want to show you something. I want to make sure we can't get around nothing. We ain't getting around nothing here. And we want to make sure, and that's the, we might well look at the theme on that. We ain't getting away with nothing. 
Let's go over here to Genesis chapter 45. Pick it up at verse eight. I want to show you something on, 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 on Joseph. I want to show you something about Joseph. It says, so now it was not that you sent me hither. Tell me that he sent them over there to, to Egypt. He's telling his brother, y'all didn't send me here. Ain't none of y'all sent, ain't none of y'all sent me here. He says, but God, the guy had sent him there. The guy had sent him there. He says, he had made me a father. Are you kidding me? One under, let's understand some things spiritually and foundationally. A father is a progenitor. He's a creator. That's what a father is. I want you to make sure you clearly get this. A father is a progenitor and he's a creator. That's why you got a father who will create lies and you got a father who's all about truth. He's a progenitor and he's a creator. And he said, and God had made him father to Pharaoh, the king of sin. The king of iniquity. He had made Joseph a ruler of his house. Actually, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something just to show it to you, just to make some people actually mad. But I'm going to show you where he's telling him this. When you look at Genesis chapter 4, and I want you, we're going to look at verse 7, then we're going to come back over there. As what he told Cain. He told Cain, he said, Cain, if thou doest well, thou shalt be accepted. I accept you. He said, but if thou doest not well, sin life at the door. And unto thee be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Joseph is down there hanging out with Pharaoh, the king of sin, and Joseph is ruling it. Get a load of those apples. Catch on to, I'm, I'm lord of his house and ruler throughout all Egypt. Joseph is down there where the king of sin is, but he's ruling it. Same as what the Most High said. Pay attention to me, listen to me, let me guide you, and you gonna rule over sin. But if you don't do it, sin lying at the door. Satan want to come in. Joseph was the Lord of, over Ruja, over over Egypt, and the Lord and the father to and the father to to, to Pharaoh. And it goes on to say where you see this, good things or bad things can be in one house. It depends on you. It tells you, can nobody enter into a strong man house and spoil his goods? Nobody. So don't sit there and say something happened to you a certain way. So what he'll do here, clean your house. When you make that statement, he's going to clean your house. But we have a problem that we, each and every one of us had. We have a problem. We clean on the things we shouldn't have been cleaning on to. We got to see what they are. And this is the problem. This is why it's hard for a lot of us to break certain things in this world. Because a lot of us don't want to get rid of anything. A lot of us hold on to things. A lot of us continually do these things. But we got to change this. We got to break these bands and start doing what God has already commanded of us. And we promised him we was going to do it. We promised him this. Let's look at this right here in uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 44. Then he said, I will return to my, my house. I'm going to return to my house from which I came, which I came out of. And when he come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. 
He found it empty, swept, and garnished. That's how he found the house. He went back to where he came from, but he found it empty, swept, and garnished. He gets better. It says, then goeth he, take it with himself, seven other spirits more wicked than himself, including they enter in and dwell there. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he will first bind the strong man. I'm going to go back to my house and I'm going to take some homeboys with me this time. I'm going to take some boys with me this time. That's more wicked than me. And it's telling you that's more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so, when shall it be unto this wicked generation? That's talking about us. Also be to us. That's all we, we, we can take this wicked generate no just take this also should be to us you take out this generation us <clears throat> excuse me we, we 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 have a problem here we have a worse problem here that we didn't did things so the main thing is the, 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 the body, the body, the flesh needs a spirit for it to live, for it to survive. The body needs a spirit. Flesh came rule flesh. It needs something. It needs a, you know how women are cooking. They say, I got a little bit of, umph. I got to put that little, it changes the, the taste of something. Same thing here. It, the body needs a spirit to control it. So either Satan is going to be your husband or God is going to be your husband. One of the two is going to be your husband. It ain't no in-betweens. It ain't no, well, I'm just walking around here like a zombie. No, that's Satan's your husband. That Satan is your husband. It's no in-betweens. I want to show you this, and we, we want to make sure we get a clear understanding here. In Genesis chapter 2, picking it up at verse 22, it's telling us this. And, and you'll see, he, he didn't put it in him, but he's telling you what he did. He made it capable to where it can rest there. And it tells us right here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 22, it says, In the rib which the Spirit of God has taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. He didn't say it, put it in him. It brought her unto the man. And then Adam proceeded to lie. He proceeded to lie, but you see, he brought her unto the man. So, we want to seek and we want to desire wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And he brought that to us. Brought it right to her. You see, Adam, Adam lied. Adam said, this is now bone by bone, flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. Yeah. Why do verse 25 say this? It says, and they were both naked and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. See, that's something you need to explain, but people said, well, no, that's talking about something. No, it ain't. That shows you how much you don't understand the Bible because he didn't take on that. Because all you got to do is look at verse 3, and it, chapter 3, and it, you see it kicks in. But we need a husband. We need something to control the flesh. Husband, husband. So he's the giver. He is the giver of the house. He keeps everything together within the house. And the woman is the spirit and she's in subjection to the husband. Are you with me? 
I want you to stay with me because we got to go back over there. But I, not, I need to make sure we understand clearly what is all happening when we just read that one verse over there. Know you not, brother, how the law have dominion over a man as long as he live it. We got to understand that. So we need to understand the knowledge. And then when we had the knowledge, the spirit, and when we're looking at the spirit, we're looking at a she. The husband, and he's the spirit that counsels the flesh. Good or bad, don't matter. If it's a good spirit, it's going to counsel the flesh. If it's a bad spirit, it's going to counsel the flesh. Everybody with me? I need you to stay with me on this. Don't, don't get lost on this. And I just need you just put in yes if you understood it. Say no if you didn't understand it. But I need to make sure when the flesh can't control flesh, and if you're going to have a spirit that's going to rule it, God going to rule it or Satan going to rule it, but either one is going to rule that flesh. If you ain't going to rule it by yourself, period. You ain't ruling it. One of them going to rule it because it needs a husband. It needs a husband to do it. And when we sit there and we see this, all flesh needs this husband. And we got to find out something here to make sure when it needs a husband, we got to make sure we know something. We need to make sure we hold on to certain things and we're going to find out exactly what this is talking about all the time. All the time. And we got to find out this. It's tucked away in 1 Timothy where Paul actually breaks off everybody, but people think it's just talking about a female woman. And it's not. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But men to sit there and say, no, that's talking about y'all. Y'all need, that's talking about each and every one of us. Do it say women? W-O-M-E-N? Or do it say woman? M-A-N. You tell me. And it's telling you, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. We better get this. Oh, we better get this. So the one learning, and this is a learning moment, even when you're how Actually, I want to tell you what. <laughs> Besides saying it, I'm going to make sure we see it so we can't get away from nothing. Let's go to John in chapter 14. <laughs> 14 and verse seven. You'll see what he says. He says, if ye have known me, ye should have known my father also, my progenitor, my creator also. You would have known him, including from henceforth, he, ye known him, including have seen him. You see what he's saying? Everybody see what he said. So if you want to know her husband, there you go right there. He's the master of the house. And the husband, to make sure we know what a husband man, husband man is, that's talking about a master of the house. Actually, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Just make sure. I just want to make sure we clearly all on the same page here. That's why he says this. That's why it says, I, in, in, in John chapter 15, verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, including my father, the progenitor and creator, is the husbandman. He's the master of the house. Stay with me. And the woman is to learn in silence. And then she hear it, she do it. She hear it, she do it. She hear it, she do it. She's the spirit. In fact, let's 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 pour a little bit more information. Cause we we just want to make sure we get all our eggs in the basket. Put all our eggs in the same basket, then we can roll through it. <clears throat> in Revelation chapter three, but we're gonna see this, it's tucked away in verse 20. That's why you see Yahweh shine them talking about what he said, remember. Remember, remember Genesis, remember, I stand at the door, including knock. He knocks. He ain't just going to barge in. He ain't, he ain't going to try to just take over your house. He says, providing any man hear my, no, we just went through here. We just went through this. Hear my voice. 
We just went through here. Just went through this. And opened the door. I will come in and we'll sup with him and he with me. You don't see him beating down no door, do you? No, you got to, you got to let him in. We have to let him in. So we need to understand what this spirit is talking about. Let's go back over here to, uh, to John chapter 14 and finish out what I was doing. But I just want to bring out a little bit of clarity there. So we're going to go to 1410. We're going to see there. It says, believeth that thou not that I am in the father. I'm in the father. I'm in the, I'm in the master's house in the father and me because I'm the temple of God. This flesh is the temple of God and the words that I speak, the words that I speak, you better hear it. You better understand it. I speak unto you. I speak not of myself. <laughs> I speak not of myself, but the progenitor that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. He the one doing the work. But he goes on more. He goes on a little bit more. Believe me that I am in the progenitor, the father, including the father in me, or else believe me for the very word. So when he tell me to do something, I do it. When he tell me to do something, I do it. But men is so caught up in themselves, they want to make sure they find in some kind of way to control a woman. You can do this. You can't wear that. You don't do this. You don't do, do that. Let women learn in subjection. That's talking about both of us. They, no, women this. Women that. Crazy. Craziness. And it gets even better. We go down over here to... to, to Timothy chapter, chapter one, chapter three, we want chapter three, but we're going to pick it up at verse four because it gets even more craziness here. It says one that ruleth his own house. Now we should understand what that's talking about, but man, but man going to use that to sit there talking about ruling his house house. How in the world, how in the hell you going to rule the house? And sometimes you got crazy people dealing with you. How are you going to do that? You got children being whatever they want to do. You tell me. But it's the one that rules his own, his own, own house. Having children, having works. You see how people miss this? You see how people get this screwed up? Having children in, in, in these works in subjection with all gravity. So you got to have all this with all gravity. And when it's been subjection, let, 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 let's tear some of this. Let's, let's tear some of this down. Let, let's tear some of this down. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. We're going to see something. We're going to come back over there, but I want to show you something. We're going to go over here to Romans chapter 8, verse 13. I want to take you to a couple of places. Romans 8, 13. And we want to see this. And I want to take you somewhere because I want to make sure you clearly get this all together. And we remember the first time is it eight Romans eight chapter verse 13. It says, if you live after the flesh, you should die. But if, if thou through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body or the flesh, ye should live. So you can't live according to the flesh. Cause if you hear your butt going to die, it's going to go back to the earth as it was. And when it go back to the earth and that spirit goes to God, he going to tell, Hey, Hey Michael. Yeah. Toss that over there on the left. No problem. Done. Done. A man who rules his own house, having children, having works in subjection with all gravity. And let's understand what gravity is because some people might don't understand what gravity is, but I want to make sure subjection is one in the subjection. When you look at scripture, you want to understand what it means in the main form that was originally written in the paleo. And it's telling you a servant unto tributary, or you can look at a servant in tributary. So you want to sit there and understand, and you want to be as a servant 
unto tributary. Where you paying this? And how you do it? In subjection. Those children in subjection mean in gravity, meaning righteousness and honesty. That's what it's telling you right there. In righteousness and honesty. How in the world? You see what Job, I just showed you Job last week. Just showed you Job last week. And we have to look at this and we have to be in subjection with all gravity and all righteousness and honesty. This is not speaking about children, children. This ain't speaking about that. But people, oh no, that's what they're talking. That's not what they're talking about. And we got to understand what that means. In fact, let's grab a little bit more over here in Romans chapter seven, verse two. It says, for the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law of her husband as long as he liveth. You see how it's cute? As long as he liveth. Semicolon, because it's going to change. However, if the husband be dead, she loses from the law of her husband. The flesh live according to the law. Oh, light should be coming on. She's loose from the law of her husband. He's flesh. He's flesh. But it gets better. Or oh, it gets better. Let's look at this over. Let's go back over here some. And pick this up in um in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse 5. It says, if a man, if providing a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he care for the church of God? And they, and this what preachers use this. Just like I say, anything a Christian pastor tells you, you need to make sure you pay attention to it. Cause he's going to lie to you. They use this. Oh, well, you got to be over this house. No, it ain't. He talking about rule his own house, ruling your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, having works of that and, ha and keeping subjection with all gravity, with all righteousness, making sure you ain't doing nothing that is unholy to God. Clear as day. Clear as day. But they're going to sit there and do everything according to the flesh. Uh, how your children? How your children doing it? How your children doing it? How your children doing it? Your children ain't doing it? Then you can't do this. Then you can't do that. Everything is according to the flesh. Boo-boo. Show me a, a Christian pastor who ain't boo boo. Cause he's going to explain that according to the flesh every time. And it has nothing to do with it. If it did, the jail houses would be empty. The court system wouldn't be no need. Nobody want to raise bad children. No one. But they misunderstand that. One that rules his own house, having works in subjection, you ain't sitting there doing no adultery and all that craziness. How you think Joseph was able to be successful where he was? Joseph knew how to rule his own house. When she wanted to get with him, what did he? No, you ain't getting with me. He had to spend some time in jail come out, but he carried his children. His works was always in subjection with all gravity, with all righteousness. Cause he said, how can I do this great, this, this evil thing against God? That's what he told her. She, okay. That's something for you. You ain't giving up none. Okay. Well, I got something for you. She told on him, told a lie, but she told on him. These are things that goes on. So when you have to do it with all gravity, all righteousness is what's going on here. And it's telling you something right here in verse six. Not a novice. And I tell you right now, any Christian pastor, any camp, they ain't saying picking one, any, A-N-Y, they're novice. You can sit there and take it how you want to. We got some here. Take it how you want to. They're novice. They're novice at this. And it's saying, least be lifted up with pride 
he fall into condemnation of the devil. That's why we had that one guy sitting there. I found discrepancies in second of trees. Called himself Cornelius the Israelite. Novice. Novice. And as it said, can't no man do that stuff. Can't no man take over a strong man's house. It's impossible. In fact, uh, it says, I'm going to show you another part in John. John, John, he, Yahweh Shai, he, he, that's why I say, you don't want him talking. I try to stay away from him a lot of time because when he talks, a lot of people don't like what he says. It says, no man take it from me. John chapter 10, verse 18. No man take it from me, but I lay down. I lay it down myself. I lay down my life. I let the spirit take over and it controls me. I ain't let nobody come take it. I'm letting it guide me. I'm letting it guide the flesh. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. This commandment I received of my father. I knock on the door. I slip and let me come in and he, he'll run it. He'll be the master of the house. I don't know what part we missing here, but we have to understand, can't no man take this unless you let him. And it's only them who let will let that happen. You have to choose which is going to rule your flesh. Either going to be ruled by the spirit or it's going to be ruled by the father of the flesh. You have power to mortify your bodies. <clears throat> you have power to where you can make them come alive. This is your choice. This is 100% your choice. So we must come to Jehovah, the spirit of God without blemishes, without a blemish, meaning without conditions. Cause that's all it is. A blemish is condition. You got people over there right now looking for a red cow without blemish. Stupidest thing in the world, but they doing it. Why? They doing things according to the flesh. Looking for a red, looking all over, looking all over the dang cow. Looking all over the cow for a blemish. And then every time they say, oh, I think we found one. I think we found one without a blemish on it. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you have to laugh because I'm telling you, if you want to see comedy, that's comedy. That's comedy. And he's telling you right up front what's going on. And he's telling you, can't nobody take this from, but you got to come to him without a blemish. He can't have no conditions on it. Let's get a little bit better on this. Let's get, let's get a little bit better on this. Let's go down to Deuteronomy. And we're going to look at something over here in uh, Deuteronomy chapter um, 24. 24. And we want verse 16. 16 is one I want. <clears throat> it says the father's is what I was saying early. The fathers, one second. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You see that's why I said a man rules his own house, having children in subjection. Again, how in the world is a man going to be killed for what his children did? The reason why they don't understand the front of the book. They'll tell you we're New Testament believers. So they don't understand anything in the law. Nothing. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. 
and one that ruleth well his own house, having children in subjection with all gravity. If a man know not how to rule his own house, how can he take care of the church of God? So the people will sit there, nah, he ain't it. And it's telling you right up front, the father ain't gonna be put to death for what that kid did. So you know these two are talking about two different things. But again, we dealing with boo-boos. We dealing with boo-boos. Let's move, let's move on. Let's move on and find out a little bit more here. Cause we getting down to the nitty gritty. It said, so providing, so providing something we need to see. So providing while her husband liveth, she be married. You see this problem here? She be married to another man. She'll be called an adulteress. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Just like I said, I'm going to be very extremely upfront here. Because we need to start pushing more directness to you. But I'm going to share with you what adulteress is. And I'm going to show you adulteress, adulteries, adulterers, in, adul in, a, in adultery. They all mean something different. So don't try to sit there, oh, I know what this is, and I'm going to apply it to each one. No, then you being boo-boo, but that's Christian. That's what Christians do. But it's saying you're going to be called an adulteress. This is what you're going to be called. And when you want to make this 100% clear, it's already told us up front that one must mortify the body. But if your husband of the flesh live, you're going to seek to marry other flesh. And you'll be called adulterer. Why? Adultery don't mean nothing but a worshiper of many gods. That's why I said she should be called a worshiper of many gods. That's what, that's what they're telling you. In fact, let's go here and have a clear up sound for you. We're going to go over here to Matthew chapter 6 and pick it up at verse 24. And that's why Yahweh tells you this. No man can serve two masters. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. Either he's going to hate one and love the other, or else he's going to hold the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve flesh and spirit. It's impossible. Because one, you're going to be called an adulterer, a worshiper of many gods. Capiche? And actually, I'm going to tell you what, let me show you this before we go further, because I want to make sure you clearly understand what I'm saying, because I'm, I already know some people are still going to do it. But I just want to make sure you clearly know this. So when they get it wrong, they know they got it wrong. And and then but they can't come over here saying that we did that. So you see right here. It says the adulterers and the adulteress. You see, it's telling you, including the adulterers, including the adulteress. So it's telling you, it's two, they mean two different things. They mean two different things. But I promise you, some people is still going to apply what, I, what we actually showed them, what it actually means in paleo. They still going to apply it to all of them. And then when they get it wrong, then they're going to say, y'all did it. No, it didn't. You was being boo-boo. Typical boo-boo. But we see here, but I'm showing you right here, that's why they mean differently. And when we get to those, I'll show you what they mean. I don't have a problem with that. But the main thing is we want to understand that they're going to be called a worshiper of many gods. But if her husband be dead, he's telling you, he's telling you, you got to be dead. She should be free from the law. So she be no more. She be is no worshiper of many gods. Though she be married to another man. That's the catch. I hope we caught those dice. Hopefully we caught those dice there. Hopefully we caught those dice. So with the husband, the house band, the one keeping everything together, we had to be under the law of the husband. The lifestyle of the husband. We got to be under this. The husband is the ruler of the house. 
We got to understand what's going on here. In fact, um, to help you get an understanding here, I want to show you something else because I'm going to make sure we can't get away with that. Pretty much that's all I'm doing. But I'm going to take you here. I'm going to go right back over here to 7, but I want you to make you look at 9. We're in the same place, but I want you to look at verse 9 in Romans chapter 7, verse 9. We're going to look at these. We're going to go down a little bit. But it says, For I was alive without the law once. But the commandment came, sin revived. You see, when the commandments came, sin revived. And I died. Living according to the flesh. He's telling you right up front what he's doing. He's telling you up front what is going on. When he came in, he died. And it's telling you more so when he gets in clear. It says, including the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. So if I live this way, I'm going to live this all the, way, all the way unto death. And if I live according to the Spirit, this into death, but there ain't no death in the Spirit. He's clear. He's clear. So we need that death with the Spirit. And if we have death with the spirit, it never dies. That's why he tells you we need that. We need that one spirit. We need that one. So we got to figure out how to work that out. And when you see this in John chapter 11, verse 26, watch what he says here. Yahweh shall say, he says, whosoever liveth, including believeth in me, shall never die. Believeth thou this? Do you believe it? If you believe the word and you take in that word, you'll never die. But you have to have it in your heart. It's not in the heart of everybody. Some people just have it. Play with it. But we have to do this. This is what we have to do. And we have to find out exactly how to do this. Paul finishing out saying this. And we see Paul, he, he says this in quite different. He says, for sin, for the evil thoughts and the, the wicked imaginations, taken occasion by a commandment, deceived me. They deceived him. Including by it, slew me. <laughs> so we need we need to make sure the main thing is what we need to do. We need to understand clearly what we need to do. Because we need a ruler. We need a ruler. We can all agree this together that we need a ruler. In fact, you're gonna see here, we're gonna we're gonna see, we're gonna look at this part right here in verse four in chapter seven of, of Romans. I want you to see this with me. It says, Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. We can't serve two masters. We it's impossible for us to serve two masters. So either we got to mortify one and let the other live. Either that one going to die of natural causes. If we let the flesh die of natural causes, then you're going to die to death. A widow. So we have to understand how this works. We understand we, we, we got all the foundational stuff. We, we got all our stuff in our basket. And now we got to figure out what we need to do. I want to share something with you. I want to share something with you as we move forward. Because we, we, we pretty much got a lot of information to help us out. 
we'll find something tucked away in wisdom of solomon chapter 6 picking it up at verse 22 key in comparing for wisdom comparing for wisdom what she is wisdom is what she is as she came up I will tell you it will not hide mysteries from you but will seek her out from the beginning of her inactivity and bring the knowledge of her unto light and will not pass over the truth. We want that, that husband. We want that one to control the flesh. So if we want that husband to become the flesh, then we have to do something. What we have to do, then we have to kill our husband. Are you with me? I want you to understand what I just said. We have to kill our husband. I mean, we have to kill this ruler of the flesh. So the only way we can kill this ruler of the flesh, we have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. It's killing the husband. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Everybody with me on this. Let's let's look at something. And we're gonna we're gonna see how this all gonna work out. Let's go over a little bit more. We're gonna take this over to Exodus and we're gonna see some more stuff here. Exodus chapter chapter twenty two. And we're gonna pick it up at verse twenty. To see some things that's here. And we have to pay attention to what's going on because this we have to do to become because we want a husband. So we have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. The ruler of flesh. The creator of these imaginations. It says this in Exodus chapter 22 verse 20. It says he that sanctify that sacrificeth unto any god so we didn't sacrifice to any God, save only unto the Spirit of God only. He shall be utterly destroyed. The reason why I'm kind of slowing, I want you to really pay attention to what, what, he's, what he's saying here, what, what we can find out. Because anyone who has sacrificed and made covenants unto idols, The spirit of God, she's going to destroy you. That's a zero-sum game. Because we live in the deeds according to the flesh. We have defiled the temple of God. Then God is going to then destroy us because our temple is not separated unto God. <clears throat> so we should not let no man, no man, M-A-N, no man, that's man or woman, deceive you or you deceive yourself seeking God or Christ in a building because he's not there. He resides in people. He only control people. He can be the God of that house. That's why he's saying he don't dwell in places made with hands. How can he control, you, you see, look how many buildings burn down every year. They break into. Under crookedness. Christ don't dwell in there. Men's in there just lying to you. And people say he's there. So don't let no man deceive you in this way. Because if so, he shall utterly be destroyed. But we want to pay attention to something as he continually talks. It says, Thou shalt neither vex. This is vex, it's talking about you shouldn't provoke or anger a stranger when it has children. 
What's your anger now? Nor oppress them. Don't do this. It's a reason these things is done. It's a reason those things are done. But you don't do that to them. They did it to us, but that don't mean we go back and now we do them. That's, that's silliness. That's stupidity. We didn't like it when they were doing it to us, so why should we do them? But the main thing is this, is um, don't you vex them or oppress them. <clears throat> we was in the same position in Egypt, in the house of bondage. But he says something a little bit more here. One second. So we, we need a little bit more here what we got to say here. Verse 22. Here's where the issue becomes. Here's where the issue is. It says, Ye shall, you shall not afflict any widow. I can just use this that part right there because Father is talking about something else which we'll do on another teaching but it says you should not afflict any widow. And afflict is talking about to humble or torture in a certain way. So you are not to torture or humble a widow. And most people when they're widows they're sitting in a whole different life. Light. And they figured, well, she can't defend herself. I can treat them any kind of way I want to. I can do whatever I want to do it. They can't do anything because they're a widow. Don't you humble them <clears throat> or torture them in any way. In any way. But we have people who, no matter what, they're going to look over that. Now, we need to know what a widow is. We need to know what this widow actually is. Out of Paleo Hebrew, which many people have tried to use many different things. I can even show you um, Strong's. Actually, I'm going to tell you what, I got it. I'm going to show you what Strong's got. I'm going to show you what Strong's got, and I'm going to show you what another one got. And then we're going to go to it. Strong's has widow. And they're using it as widow 53 times, I guess 53 times in the Bible. Desolate house, desolate place. Widow. You have uh, etymology online. Let me see something. I want to see something. Etymology online pretty much has the same thing. The reason I'm showing you that because I wanted you to understand clearly the Most High speaks in parables. So when people use these avenues, they use these tools, the Strong's Concordance and Etymology online, the Bible speaks in parables. So when they say that's what it's saying in Hebrew, it's not saying that. The same thing is, personally, I show it to them. And they see, it's not saying what they say and they're saying. And when you look at what a uh, widow is, it makes it perfectly clear why he holds to what he holds to. But I want you to write down what a widow is, to where we can always know what a widow is and why God is so partial and so strict about why he's saying you should not afflict you not to humble or you not to torture them and it has a few other words for it a widow because a widow means a one that's relieved and they say it's a relieved one many people say a revived one they say that they're used in different ways. Most people, but it's used always one that is relieved. 
That's what a widow is. They are relieved and what happens is he ministered to them. He ministered to these widows. I'm going to show you that. <clears throat> Let's go over here somewhere and I'm going to show you something. We're going to look at this and we'll find it in Psalms in chapter 4146. And we'll find it in verse 9. He says this. The Spirit of God preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless, including widow. That's what he does. He relieved them. But the way of the wicked turneth upside down. That's why he does this. That's why I say some people are going to say he revives. Some people are going to say he relieves. But the reason why with me, and when I was going through my Hebraic on this, I'd used to relieve. Because revived I couldn't see. But I get it. I clearly get it. So I understand that they've woken up. I get that. But relieved is mainly what he was using. He relieved them. And what he do, and he administered to them. Because the Spirit of God has relieved them. And he tells you that. So we got to remember what's going on here. We have to remember how this always goes on. And you'll see this again when we look at Acts. And we'll see this uh, in Acts. Chapter 9. Verse 1. We're going to look at verse 3. Watch what happened. And we know what Paul was taught. He was tied into a whole bunch of craziness. Remember Paul was tied. It says, including he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Suddenly there shined round and about him light from heaven. Fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why prosecutest thou me? Watch what happens. And he said, Who art thou? Lord. And the Creator said, I am salvation, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. It's hard for you to do this. I don't know why you're doing what you're doing. <clears throat> but you're doing it. So, Paul needed to become a widow. I want you to stay with me. Paul needed to become a widow. To make sure he can do what he needed to do. Because Paul now got to separate from the law of the fathers and stay with the laws of God. He couldn't serve two masters. So since he couldn't serve two masters, he had to let go of one. He had to mortify the deeds of another and live according to the one. And, and Paul made a suggestion to everybody. We'll find this over in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8. You see him saying this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, <clears throat> excuse me, he says, I say for this reason to the unmarried, including widows, relieved ones. It is good for them, providing they abide even as I. He's saying that it's just stay this way, even as I am. I'm relieved. He's making something real clear to us to where we need to understand where he's coming from. Because once you're relieved of mortifying your flesh and not adhering to things according to flesh, and you're only adhering to things of God, he's saying, hey, stay as I am. Stay as I am. But he's telling you this and making sure you clearly get this. He says, but, however, providing thou cannot contain if you still want to do the works of the flesh, you're still seeking intimacy, you're still seeking these things according to flesh, 
You can't contain it. Let them marry. Then you marry. The reason for that is, it's better to marry than to burn. It's better to be married than to be burned. Because if you fornicating, that makes you a whore. And there's no whores in Israel. It's telling you right up front here. So the widows are relieved. The unmarried widows are relieved ones. And they've been ministered to, to the kingdom. But if you can't contain yourself, then you do that. It gets better when we go down to 732. We get a little bit more information. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32, makes some more clarity. It says, but I would have you without carefulness. <laughs> Meaning he's getting ready to break you off. He that is unmarried. So if you're unmarried. This is why he's saying, once you're relieved of this, once you don't have no more ties to this, you're unmarried. You care for things that belong to the creator. How he may please the creator. That's the point. That's the point of this. Don't you, now you're only going to care for him. The thing is, when you look at verse 33, however, but he that is married cares for things that are of the world. If you can't contain yourself and you, you're married, you have to care for things of the world. That flesh. But you have some going to still not do that. How that he may please his wife. But he goes on better. Verse 34. It says there's a difference between a wife and a virgin. It's a difference. And he's going to explain it to you. It says the unmarried woman that is a widow, that is a relief when cared for things of the creator. <clears throat> That's it. No one else. No one else. That she may be wholly separated both in body and so she's not doing out there. She's not out there being a whore, not out there being a whoremonger, not out there being a dog. She may be separated both in body, including in spirit. But she that is married, care for things of the world, how she may please her husband. So now she got to care for things of the world for her husband as well as things for God. Same thing you have men and women, they do these things separately. And they still won't do nothing with the man and the women won't do nothing with the man and the man won't do nothing with the woman. No matter what, they will burn. So you don't sit there, you don't you don't go after your 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 wife or your husband behind that. If they choose not to do it, you just stay and you just live as you live. But you don't go out and do something stupidly. You don't go out and do something wickedly against that person. And God going to judge that because that's the law right here. So that's why when people, they sit there and they talk to me about it and I tell them, if she's holding from you and she's not doing it and she's not really into it, then it's not for you to sit there to go do something outside it that go seek someone else don't do that because at the end of the, at the end of the day God is going to do the separating no matter what he's going to separate because the same as he said you have done this to him no you weren't doing it you were doing it unto me I allowed you guys to marry because he's supposed to and you're supposed to only be dealing with one it's the same thing for a man doing a woman that way because she didn't got out of shape and this and that and so now you see something else you want to go do that and she just contained don't go try to do something against him that's going to happen once you don't do that God going to take that he's going to take that and okay we're going to do it you are supposed to be taking care of both things things of the world things of God you wasn't 
you thought you was taking care of things of God, but once you found in one book, you found in them all. This is why many people, <clears throat> well, I told you, a lot of people is not going in the kingdom. They think they're going there, but they're not. So you contain what you're doing because a widow is one that is relieved. That's what you keep in mind. So you contain yourself no matter what. Let's go back over here in 23. And this is something that a lot of people, I literally don't like teaching on this part, but I'm actually show it to you because we need to understand what this is talking about as a whole. But I literally don't like teaching on it. But if something shows up and he has it on my plate, I will teach it. However, I try my best to avoid this. That's, I'm just letting you know up front where I'm coming from. And he tells you this in verse 23. It says, if thou afflict them. So this means if you sit there and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't did them in. You afflict them. We already seen what this was about, talking about earlier. We seen you done humbled and you tortured them in any type of way, shape or form. This is the problem. So the same thing as a man, he's sitting there saying, I'm going to go here because she didn't gain two, two, two ounces and she's out of shape. Or the woman sitting there saying, I'm not going to do it. The man, he can go sleep on the couch. He can go sleep in the doghouse. He can go do all this thing. Then you're still going to afflict them because they're not, they are unable to sit there the way you're going to satisfy the flesh. And you're supposed to take care of both. So what happens is this here. It's telling you, and this is for married people. This ain't for fornicating people. This is for married people. It says, if thou afflict them in any wise, in any type of way that you decide that you're going to do that. Now, this is why I say I don't like to teach this. It says, including they cry at all unto me. That's why I don't like this. Personally don't like it, but guess who I am? I'm just Flavor Flav. I'm just here to tell you what time it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Because if they cry unto the Spirit of God, the problem is, and they follow in the Spirit of God, he's telling you right in front, I will surely hear them. That's where the problem is. And that which you don't want. This is why a lot of men, a lot of women, when you sit there and you really crying unto God and then something goes on wrong, this is where the issue is. Because they sit there and if he takes care of it, it's a problem. That's why most people, men or women, it's sometimes it's best just to deal with the long suffering. That's why you deal with long suffering, temperance. That's the point of that. Because if you're sitting there saying that's too much for you to bear, he's going to take care of it. You don't want him taking care of it. I'm just letting you know up front where, where it's coming from. Same as same as uh, Cain. He said, hey, this is too much for me to bear. You see the most high, he take care of that. And it says, in my wrath, my wrath shall wax hot and I will kill you with the sword including your wives shall be widows and your children's fatherless. He's not here to play games. He will take care of the deal for you. That's why we have to practice long suffering. Some things we just got to suck it up, put on these big man britches, put on them big women panties and keep moving forward. Because if you cry against it and he hears it and you following God, your mate can have a bad day. They actually have a bad, a bad whole bunch of bad stuff. And that's what you don't want. So you got to do that with all carefulness. And that's the main thing. Because if he hears you and you following God, they got a problem. That's the issue here. So as we see this, we'll go back over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to pick it up at verse 4 and look at it a little bit more. And just to get the understanding there. <clears throat> That's why it says the wife have no power of her own body. The wife, according to the flesh, the husband is the head. She has no power of her own body, but the husband. Likewise, the husband, <clears throat> the ruler of the house. He have no power of his own body, but the wife. That's why he's saying it this way. 
You guys have no, either one of you guys don't have no power over the other one. No one can have more power than the other one. But he's telling you right here, and I want you to make sure you understand what's going on there. It says, defraud ye not one another. Defraud. And we have to do what's right there. We have to do what's right there. And we have to defraud, meaning we can't deprive, refuse, or deny one another. That's what that actually means. Deprive, de defraud means deprive, refuse, or deny. We can't do that. It says, don't do that. It is not accepted be with consent for a time. You have to always be in agreement with that. Okay, well, we're not going to do nothing, this and that. Okay, yeah, it's cool. Okay, cool. We ain't got to. It's agreed. And it says that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, including come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. And what that is telling you, <clears throat> excuse me, to find out what all this is. Inconsistency, talking about self-will stubbornness. That's what Satan want to catch you at. This is what he wants you on. He wants you on that. But Satan, because Satan attempts you on that. He know that you're stubborn, you'll do it. That's what he want to catch you on. So the only thing that's saving many of the men, saving many of the women, is that your spouse is not crying to God. Technically, that's what's saving a lot of them. And I'm talking about these are not the ones who just anyone doing it. These are the ones who's actually following God. Actual followers of Christ. Not the ones who's trying to follow the Christ. That's the thing. So if you cry, something going to happen. <clears throat> and you'll see the ones that's enduring that. Those are the ones that is enduring that oppression, that endurance, and they fulfilling that long suffering. So as Jehovah, as he tells you, he's keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving in iniquity and transgressions, including sin, but he's not clearing the guilty. That's why he says that. By no means he's clearing the guilty. So we got to remember what this is all going about. And the reason why you don't want your brother or your sister to stumble in any way. Actually, let's look at this and we're going to see, get some more understanding there. In 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. He that loveth his brother. Now, Again, most of us don't know what brother actually mean. But just like I said, I'm going to make sure a lot of things today, we're going to be on, I got to make sure you're on a level playing field with me. And being on a level playing field, I need to share a lot of um, paleo words that most times I always took for granted that you would have already known, and most people didn't, but that was still fall back on me. So here, when he's talking about a brother, we want to know exactly what a brother is when we're looking at paleo. And when you're looking at paleo, it's saying he that loveth his equal. That's all that's saying. That's your brother. That's your equal. Abideth in understanding. Abideth in light. That's what that says. Including there is none occasion of stumbling in him. That's the point. You don't want your brother to be defrauded in any way to where he will stumble. That's the point of that. That's why he's holding. That's why he's holding those those things to us. We got to keep those in mind. And when we do it, and say like, um, if you have a brother or sister and you out there doing something else and you depriving them and you doing whatever and they stumble, and people say, oh no, that's on them. That's on them. That's on them. no. He's gonna die in his sins, but you're gonna be required. You the one that did it. That's how. That's how God does it, because. You the one decided to be married. You the one decided. So once you decide to marry that one, you're responsible for taking care of things of God and also taking care of things of the world. 
which is that man or that woman. That's the issue. And when you cause that one to stumble in any way, so even if they haven't just um, thoughts of uh, being with other people, of anything of that sort, you're causing that person to stumble. So once you cause that person to stumble, now it's all on you. Now you're the one that has the problem because they wouldn't have had that problem if it wouldn't have happened. So we got to keep those in mind. And we're going to go over here to verse and look back at verse 24. <clears throat> and that's why he's saying this. He says that in my, in my wrath will wax hot and I will kill you with the sword. He's going to kill you by the word because we had a word right here in front of us. So since we have it in front of us and we continually do it, he got us. We can't get around it. So what we have to do, what do we have to do with this? We have to divorce ourselves from the flesh, period. Now I want to show you how we are, need, and what they do. Because we're just going to get widows or divorced by the flesh. We, 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 we divorce it in the flesh that is according to flesh, because flesh will divorce flesh. That's, that's simple. <clears throat> that's why they give a letter of divorcement. According to the spirit, don't happen. Let's go back in and let's look at it. We'll see this in uh, Numbers chapter 30. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9 and get a better understanding there. Let me see. Now we want to see here, we're on verse 9. We're going to get there and see what's happening here. So now we're looking at this and we're going to get a better understanding here. It says, but every vow of a widow, you see how we're going to look at this widow. We got to look at this real close. But every vow of a widow, including her that is divorced. That's why I say a lot of us, we have to divorce this. Wherewith they have bound their souls shall stand against her. And we got to unpack all that. We need to unpack it to make sure we clearly understand what, what, what he said. Because we bound our souls to this. And it's going to stand. So all our spirit and everything we have done is going to stand. And we're going to find, figure out how this is all working. Let's go down to verse 10 and start unpacking it. Verse 10. Including providing she vowed, so she already done it, her husband, she vowed in her husband's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath. Said a lot, but we can work it out. Because when she vowed, she made a promise. But she made the promise in her husband's house. He's the head of the house. So he was in the temple. He was the one sitting in the temple. And she bound it. It's telling you right there, bound it. She fastened her soul with a bond. And with that bond, that's why it's telling you this bond. That bond is to servitude, bondage. That's what she did. That's what your spirit is doing. You done bounded this by servitude. And you did it with an oath, with the place that you did it with. So that's all they're saying. So we understand more so what this is all saying now. We're getting what this is saying, and that's why we have to watch what we're talking about when we do things, when we when we say, oh, yeah, we did this and we said that. It says, including her husband heard it. So now the head heard it. Now we want to understand again what do heard mean, because just like I said, we can't go around and sugarcoat none of this. We got to be on the same page as we go through this. And you see the husband heard it, heard, heard, heard. And he heard it, meaning he perceived and he comprehended. That's what that's telling you. So he perceived it, he comprehended what she, what she did. And held his peace at her. He held his peace at her. Including. He didn't say nothing to her. Including. Disallowed her not. Then all her vows <clears throat> shall stand, including every bond wherewith she bound, her soul shall stand. 
This is clear. This is 100% clear. So he didn't he didn't disallow it, meaning he he didn't forbid nor refuse it. Then every promise that she made gonna stand. Every covenant, every obligation that she bound, she done yoked and frittered this to her soul. That's what she did. But it's telling you more so right here. More so right here where we're going to get what's going on. It says, but if her husband, but if her husband, if he do something else, we're going to see a little bit more what happens. <clears throat> now, if the husband <clears throat> have utterly made them void, utterly ain't talking about all together. That's all that means. So utterly, we'll just say, if her husband have altogether made them void, that's all that's saying. Then we know, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her promises or concerning the, the servitudes of her soul. You see how this is going now? Now we're getting more with it. Shall not stand. Her husband have made them void. And the spirit of God shall forgive her. Because you control in the flesh. You don't have rule over flesh. So you can forgive it. Hey, I don't want nothing to do with it. So that's 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 between you two. And most people don't get that. But I'm gonna show you the same thing on what we were saying. That's why he's the ruler of the house. And many people are gonna let him rule the house. In Second Thessalonians chapter two, picking it up at verse four. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. He's the ruler of the house. And if he chooses that, don't want that to happen, not going to happen. And it tells you even more. It tells you even more. Or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing that he is God. And it tells you Right up here in verse 7. The mystery of the acts of sin doeth already the work. Only he who now letteth will let until he is taken out the way. This is going to happen. This is happening right now. In fact, get down to verse 13. It says, every vow, every promise, including every binding oath, every servitude that you made, every one of them, you made. I'm only pausing because I want you to clearly get what this is actually saying. And once you have made this promise, you made it to afflict, to humble, because you're going to, you, you call yourself going to humble the spirit of God, to humble and torture the soul. Her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. Many of us going to hold on to Satan. I don't care what we do. In fact, uh, it gets a little bit better when we look at something. In our first Timothy chapter five, picking it up at verse five. Now she that is a widow in works. You see what I said? She's a widow in works. People sit there indeed. Be a widow is indeed. No. She's a widow in works, because that's all indeeds mean. Including desolate trusted in God because she's desolate she ain't doing nothing according to the flesh trusted in God and continues the supplication and prayer night and day but 
But if you believe and you're not according to the flesh, you're going to experience these things. But some people are going to do these things according to the flesh. They're going to do these things according 100% to the flesh. Let's look at it a little bit more. As we're closing this all the way down, we're going to go over here to Revelations and pick this up at verse 18. Chapter 18 and picking it up at verse 4. And this is the thing. And I heard another voice from heaven crying, from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. We have to divorce something and become widows. We have to be willing to divorce this flesh and not be partakers of something else. Because it's telling us, it's saying, come out from her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Because we're going to be partakers of flesh. And receive not her plagues. This is happening to a lot of us. Some of us trying to serve mammon and God at the same time. Let's, let's move a little bit more. It says, for her sins have reached unto heaven and God have remembered her iniquities, all her acts of sin. And when you do all those acts of sin, you are going to get the double portion for them. We have to learn to live without the flesh. We have to mortify the deeds of our bodies and live according to the spirit reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her doubled according to her works in the cup which she had filled filled to her doubled why is it saying that because he's going to tell you how she did it how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously live deliciously oh, I'm going to fulfill my flesh I'm going to fulfill this I'm going to fulfill that I'm going to fulfill it I'm going to do this oh this is me this is me this is me this is me so much torment exactly don't you torment the other one but so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart I said a queen are you serious you know how many people say this they said a queen They said a queen. On this. <laughs> and I'm no widow. Because most people are going to sit there, even people who are not married or even never been married. They're going to say, well, I'm not a widow. You're not a widow. Keep this in mind so now we can't get out of it. <clears throat> Remember Romans 7, 1. Know ye not, brethren, how that the law had dominion over flesh as long as he liveth. Did not you remember this? But if you don't mortify the deeds of the flesh, which it tells us, Actually, let me pull this one up. To make sure we all here together, Romans chapter 8, we're going to go down to verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So if you're no widow, I need to know. You need to be able to answer yourself. Then if you're not a widow, you never separated yourself from the flesh and you never been married. It says, I'm no widow and she and shall see no sorrow. Yeah, a lot of, but a lot of people say that. And we'll see verse eight. It says, for that reason, for that particular reason, 
because you refuse to come out yourself and hold on. For that reason shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she should be utterly burned, consumed together, burnt alive. You're going to be consumed alive. with fire we desire for a strong is the creator God who taught her so hopefully we didn't understood something but I want to ask the question before we go out of here and we'll find out more so we got one other verse that I'm going to run but I want to make sure it's something we're going to find out and I'm going to put it in there right now to see what's going on. To see how well we understood. And I could ask it to where I can have people put up or I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to put how many Can we make sure how many? So I'm putting posting the questions. The question is, how many are widows according to the flesh? That's here today. We have more than 320 some people in here. How many people are widows according to the flesh that we have today? And this is the question. We have only one, well, we have, we have, uh, so far, I'm going to let it go for a minute. So we want to understand that and get a clear understanding of what's happening here. How many people are widows according to the flesh? And I'm going to let this go. We only got 45 people voting, and we should have way more than that based on the amount of people that are in here. We should get a way larger number of people based on how many people are currently in here. And same as we keep saying, people stop putting, um, don't vote and put it in the chat. We got a thing up here and you can put it there. So what we're trying to do is figure out, and I'm going to let it go a little bit longer, and then we're going to close it out. But I just want to understand how many people, according to the flesh, are widows. That's the question that we're trying to see. That's what we're trying to understand. That's what we're looking at. And the main thing is, you can see it in your in your area, so you should have been able to see it in your chat, So, because it's right there. So I'm getting ready to end this poll in about 30 seconds, because I just want to see where we're coming to. So we're getting ready to end it in about 10 seconds to see what we have. And right now we have... Um, Still not many people voting. Technically on the um based on the number that's in here. So what we doing now, we get ready to end the poll. And I want you guys to pay real close attention <clears throat> to the chat. We have seventy three people, seventy three percent of the people. So we just take that for everybody that's here. Say they are widows according to the flesh. We have 26% saying they are not. The 26% and we had 26% said they were not. 
this shows you again how much people are not understanding what happened because they live in according to the flesh so they believe in the flesh so I want to show you again more so why we have a problem and why we do these things and we see that it's a bigger issue than what you see but you see it right here because you see that you see it right there and they put it right in there in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 I want you to remember this and as we go as we're getting ready to close out here it says for the spirit of God is your God God of God's Lord of Lord's a great God mighty and a terrible which regarded not a person nor taketh reward why is it saying that he do execute judgment for the fatherless and widow and love a stranger and giveth them food and raiment so meaning this here so meaning this here we have 26 percent of the people still holding on the flesh those are not the children of God the 26 percent I don't care how we look at it how we flip it how we script it you sit in there and God is not going to reside in two places so the 26 percent are children of the flesh the 73 percent is the ones that are seeking God they are the ones trying to mortify the deeds of the flesh to where they can live according to the spirit the ones the 26 percent is living according to the flesh and doing the deeds of the flesh so this is just how clear it is and the same thing is uh we're going we're gonna to finish here but the same as we say earlier um later on today we will be coming with can we follow simple instructions can we follow simple instructions that's today at three o'clock pacific time five o'clock central time and six o'clock eastern time that would be our after sabbath teaching so many of us can join there and if you want to join that teaching there but the main thing is is you never know what you're dealing with but that's why you'll see that right there this is why it's so important to watch who you learn from because a lot of people you think someone might say well I was confused and a widow is one who had literally let the flesh die he mortified the deeds of the flesh to where you can live according to the spirit so that's why we put all those eggs in the basket way ahead of time to where we can clearly get what was going on so hopefully people have learned from that but I know many people are still going to try to change it another way and do it their, their own way but just as I said many of us it's not going that's why as I hold what I hold to and we teach the way we teach so with that I say until this evening I say to each and every person until then I'll be back at uh, 3 o'clock until then I say to each and every one Shalom Shalom